Father Albert said to me, we have to be involved. You gotta go. So, uh, we went. Now it was interesting at the time, I didn't have very much money. Remember I said I was single. And uh, I stayed at a friend's house and I was sleeping on the couch. But every day I go to the trial. And, you know, I was sitting along all these national reporters who were, shall we say, their expenses were covered. And I thought, maybe someday I'll be a reporter like that. Thank God that didn't happen. Now you, all of you in this room may be wondering, as I do quite often, well, I can't do that. I'm just an ordinary person. Well, I can come to a reception like this, maybe donate a few dollars for a good cause like pro-life, but I couldn't stand up like that and go to court and do the things Joe did. Just remember something. These are not, and Joe wasn't an extraordinary man. Ordinary people do extraordinary things when they have somebody extraordinary in their life. We need people today more than ever in this society who will witness to the transcendent. Now that's a big word in philosophy, but for us it means God. We need people today who will witness to the transcendent. We need people today to witness to the absolute. Joe witnessed to the absolute. Joe could not, absolutely could not countenance the murder of unborn children. He could not and would not countenance anything that would take the life of another human being. Joe simply said, I cannot live with this. In this world today, in Saskatchewan and Canada, this world of indifference and relativism, we need people who are willing to say, I will not do this. I will absolutely not do this one thing. Pope Benedict XVI warns us time and time again against the encroachment of the spirit of relativism. It is an infection that has the potential to erode our body, our corporate body, as citizens and as Christians. We are all ordinary people. That's how God made us. We're His children. And, but He calls us to extraordinary things. And one of the extraordinary things demanded of us today as Christians in this society, in this society filled with the disease of relativism, is to witness to the absolute. And you're doing that tonight. Therefore, we are called upon to say, this is the one thing I will not do. Therefore, we will witness to the absolute. By doing this, as you are doing, as I said tonight, we are being witnesses to this absolute. This absolute guides my life. This absolute dictates what I will do. In a changing world, in a world which says that any opinion is as valid as another, any religion is as good as another, in a world of change and turmoil, this absolute which does not change is my guide. He is my constant and His face is Jesus Christ. One of the things that we need to be reminded of is that we are all members of each other. We are all members of His corporate body. Scripture tells us that time and time again. We in the Catholic Church call it the mystical body of Christ. I believe all Christians call it the mystical body of Christ. But no matter how you put it, we are all members of the body. And as John Paul II stated so eloquently on his visit to the United States, the measure of a society is the way it treats its weakest members. He said, we are in solidarity with each other. If by our indifference or negligence, we allow something harmful to come to someone, no matter how weak and vulnerable, we diminish ourselves. And we turn, we in turn, make ourselves weak and vulnerable to be neglected when our turn comes. What goes around, comes around. Euthanasia is on the horizon, folks. It's big in Europe, and 
there are people in this country wanting to bring legislation in, etc. We won't go into that. We're here to talk about Job. There is a deep need in our country today to address, to address this other infection, which goes hand in hand with relativism, individualism. The New Testament tells us that we are all members of this one body of Christ and that it is through His body that salvation comes. That's how Jesus did it. Okay? He called 12 guys together, just like you. It wasn't any different, you know? No different than all of us sitting here, no different than Leonard. One guy was, uh, what do you do in Calgary again? You work for a workers' compensation board. Okay, we got a few jokes here. No, I used to work in government. You know, called the guy together and worked at the workers' compensation board. A farmer, fish, you know, all these. You know where I'm going with that? Ordinary people. They weren't theologically trained. They didn't go to school. You know, they didn't know how to write big letters. Well, some of them did, but most of them didn't. At the trial in 1983. Joe never actually spoke about this corporate body of Christ and how salvation comes from that. But his whole presence, his prayerful approach, witnessed to it every day. Joe stood by the weak. He stood up for the weak against all odds. He stood up, used his own resources when he didn't have to do this. That's the key. Like you and me, we don't have to do it. No one's going to put a gun to our head and go, go to the pro-life committee meeting or put a few dollars in the basket. No one's going to make us do it. It's our choice. God gave us free will. And He gave us that free will. I'm speaking to the converted here. That's part of my speech. He gave us that free will because He wanted us to choose Him. And this was the way that it works. You choose Jesus in the ordinary duty of the moment. Whether it's helping discipline our children, telling them the truth, loving our husbands and our wives, standing by those that have an alcoholic problem or need to be healed, standing by the weak, whatever that may be, it's a choice. He stood in solidarity with the unborn in the final analysis, with the weakest of the weak, the most vulnerable of the vulnerable. And one of the measures of a man, in my view, is how much life, and I'm speaking to us fathers, would-be fathers here in the room, to us men. And one of the measures of a man, in my view, is how much life he brings to others, to our families, to our community, to our country. It is because of Job that we are gathered here today. He has brought us together with the weak. His gesture in 1983 in Regina brought life and solidarity. And that is what he's bringing today. His life-giving spirit, the spirit of Christ that he worked with, is why we're here today. Joel's gesture continues to bring people together. God does not ask us to be successful. Job wasn't successful. The Canadian martyrs, Jean de Brebeuf, were not successful. You know, they got massacred. But I was recently, by the grace of God, in Quebec, and I was able in Midland, Ontario, and I visited, a life, I did a lifelong dream find, I visited uh, the grave of, of uh, Father Brebeuf, Saint Jean de Brebeuf. He wasn't successful, he's dead. He got massacred, and the whole village got exterminated, all the Hurons got exterminated by the Iroquois, the place was leveled, but there's a huge basilica there now, his grave is marked, tourists are coming, faithful and unfaithful alike, his spirit continues. Jesus doesn't ask us to be successful, he only asks us to be faithful. I know you've heard that before, and it's important, and that's what Job did. I think finally, just I'll end on this note now, is that Joe brought this whole issue of the corporate body, the corporate responsibility for the weakest of the weak back on the radar. 
because it was definitely being moved off. Individualism, relativism was coming in at that time. I know the pro, the, a lot of my friends were, you know, I spent my life in the theater, so you can imagine what kind of community that is. And they were all pro abortion They were all pro-choice, as they call them. It's a non sequitur, this pro-choice thing. But the bottom line was they were saying, well, that's your opinion, you have a right to your opinion, and this is mine. We're, going, but we're dealing with this other person here. Anyway, I uh, want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to say a few words about Joe, my good friend Joe, our good friend Joe. His memory has brought us together, and I thank God for that. May God bless him. I know he's having a good time, because I know he's in heaven, and he's saying hello to all those unborn children for whom he fought. God bless you all. Keep up praying. Thank you.